Uh, well, good morning. Um, it's uh, Mark here. It's my privilege to be doing the devotions this morning. Um, a bit cliched, I know, to have it by the, the fire with my, my cup of tea, um, but uh, I thought it might just add to the experience. Well, it does for me anyway. So anyway, welcome uh, this morning. The world certainly feels different, there's no doubt about it. Um, I'm currently working from home and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of a challenge. A challenge for me and probably a challenge for Jenny and the kids as I'm probably a bit grumpier at the moment with no match of the day or football or any of the normal things that we um, rely upon and, and uh, enjoy doing in our normal lives and all the social interactions. And for those who work within the health and social care or in um, uh, the NHS, <coughs> it's a particular struggle as, as you work at a time of huge pressure. And, and just to, to say that we, we, we all need to do the, all that we can to stay healthy and to stay uh, well. So um, we really are encouraged to stay at home, to avoid um, spreading the infection any further and, and putting our services under pressure. But we want to thank God for those that work in the NHS and in the care profession for all that you do and all that you're doing. And um, we want to continue to pray with you. And it's often times like this that we can we can stop and we can pray and ask God, God, why is it that we're struggling in this way? We've never experienced anything like this um, in this generation and it's such an unusual time. And I suppose it's clear that um, God did not make us to struggle um, in this way. He made us to have perfect relationship and to enjoy the world that he created for us. But when sin entered, um, it's clear that the world is now broken and not what it should be. And he says in Genesis, he said, because you sinned, in Genesis 3.17, um, all your life you will now struggle. And this is uh, true of our lives. We all know that life is a real struggle for us. Um, and this is a particular expression of that struggle, uh, what we're going through just now with um, the coronavirus. Um, and so the message today that I've got today is, is that uh, I want to look at struggles of life and wrestling with God and um, how in the midst of the struggle we can find God and we can be blessed by God and we can find God's purpose for us at this time. Jacob was a man who wrestled with God and he wrestled, um, he struggled with his brother Esau, he deceived his father Isaac, he struggled with his two wives, uh, wouldn't we all? Uh, he struggled with his in-laws and he struggled with his 12 sons and yet through all these struggles God had a plan for his life and he used those struggles to bring um, Jacob to that time that he was uh, meant um, to be and to, to create a great nation um, through him and through his 12 sons. And the struggle was key to Jacob becoming that man, that he was transformed, that he was shaped by the struggle with God through wrestling with God. And we all struggle and the Apostle Paul even says this, he said, I don't understand myself at all for I really want to do what is right but I don't do it. Instead I do the very things that I hate, no matter which way I turn, I can't make myself do right. I want to do, but I can't. But, he, but there is a law at work within me, and that is at war with my mind. Jacob is the only man who's described in the Bible as wrestling with God. And God loves it when we wrestle with him um, when we str in our struggles. I've got two pictures, and um, I hope you don't mind me showing these pictures, but I looked at these and found these recently. Here's a picture of Angus as a wrestler. And there's a picture of Angus, I came across these recently, Angus defeating his older brother wrestling. And they made me laugh. But wrestling is a, an intimate face-to-face um, -face combat. Um, when you're fully interactive. It's a two-way process of, of give and take and uh, it finally ends in submission and surrender as one overpowers the other. And here's my really simple message for this morning, that, that in this present situation, God loves it when we struggle and we wrestle with him. Let's not waste our time at this crisis in, in self-pity and staying stuck in mourning the loss of all the things that we miss and have relied upon all our lives, um, but that we would use this time to wrestle with God. God longs for your attention right here, right now, your undivided attention focused on him. And this time, this unique time, gives us an opportunity to wrestle and interact with God in a way that perhaps we've never had the chance to do before. And in this to see that God will bless us and do something unique in our lives as individuals and in our church 
and in our communities and we pray within our nation that as we wrestle with God that actually we allow ourselves to become somewhat undignified back to the picture of Angus that as we wrestle with him that we let our guard down that we actually let God see who we actually are the no more pretending the no more Sunday face the no more stiff upper lip or, or saying that everything's fine when actually everything is not fine over the next coming days and weeks and, and who knows maybe months we have an opportunity multiple opportunities to engage with God in a unique way in a whole new way that genuinely exposes the depth of our soul with God himself that we step out of our natural routines and our natural way of doing things and we lean on him and we come to him to engage with him to wrestle with him to fight with him over the things that are really important and through that that we become like Jacob and we'll discover this about Jacob just in a few moments we become more of the person that God made us to be as we wrestle with God that we become more that person as he redeems us as he wins us back to become that person that he made us it's true that we're facing a national crisis and the likes of which has not been seen in this generation but but we will not be overcome by it and nor will it last forever Peter says this in 1 Peter, he says, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. Suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. Let's just quickly read the account of Jacob and wrestling with God. Jacob sent his family across the Jacob River, but he stayed behind alone. That night a man came and wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he wasn't winning the struggle, he hit Jacob on the hip and it was thrown out of joint. The man said, let me go, daylight is coming. Jacob said, I won't let you go until you bless me. The man asked, what is your name? Jacob, he replied. The man said, your name will no longer be Jacob. You have struggled with God and with men and you have won. So your name will be Israel. Now let's be clear that God could have overcome Jacob easily. Jacob was no match for God whatsoever, the creator of the universe. In the same way that Angus, well certainly then, was no match for me when he was a toddler wrestling. He might be a match now. But it wasn't that he did not, God did not wrestle Jacob to, um, to, to win. It was the interaction. It was the quality, intimate, face-to-face -face interaction that he was after. It's the quality interaction with us that he's looking for. Like a father and son. No good father sets up a mock wrestling match just to win. He sets it up for the fun of the engagement with his son or daughter. The fun of... Of, of wrestling and pretending and interacting with one another so that they become more attached. And so it is with God and us that he encourages us to wrestle with him, to struggle with him, that in that there might be a depth of intimacy and attachment like we've never known before. God's looking for a wrestle which enables you to bring to the fore all your fears and all your worries and all your anxieties, and all your confusion, and all your depression, and all your anger, and all your hurt, and while he holds you in his grip at the same time. He wants that all this comes out as you struggle with him, that there's no more pretense, but you're genuinely in his presence, expressing all that worries you, and all that hurts you, and all that causes you angst, but that you wrestle with God intimately, as you bring all that you are to him and he engages with that. No more Sunday church faces. No more everything's fine, thanks, when you're breaking inside. Jacob uses the wrestling match as an opportunity to hold on to God so that God would bless him in the struggle, demanding that God would bless him. And you also have this opportunity to hold on to God over the next few weeks and months that you demand that God would bless you 
as you interact with him intimately, as you wrestle with him intimately in a way that you would never have thought possible before, that he would bless you in the midst of the struggle and that you would submit and allow him to lovingly overpower you and pin you down and you submit to him. In Jacob's wrestling match, God touches Jacob where he's strong and his hip bone being one of the strongest um, muscles in the, in the body. God touches and displaces his hip. And it's no coincidence that God does that particularly to his hip. Jacob had spent all his life running, running away, escaping. And now he could no longer run. He could no longer rely upon his natural um, response to the difficulties in his life. Through the struggle, God had disarmed his natural response to difficulties. Now God had Jacob's undivided attention. In this, he brings Jacob to the realisation of who he is, who he is by nature. As God asks Jacob, what is your name? God knows Jacob's name, but he wants Jacob to define who he is. The man asked, what is your name? Jacob, he replied. The man said, your name will no longer be Jacob. You have struggled with God and with men and you have won and your name will be Israel. In the Old Testament, the name of a person is a definition of who they are. And Jacob means deceiver or manipulator. And so through this intimate interaction with God, God reveals who Jacob is and who he has been. His character he has been a deceiver. He has been a manipulator. He has relied upon running away from all his troubles. And instead, now God stops him, displaces the thing that he relied upon, and said, I'm going to give you a new name because you have wrestled with God. You're going to be called Israel, which means struggled with God, or prince with God. Through this difficult time, wrestle with God and make yourself known to him your whole genuine self, fully vulnerable and known to a God who loves you and through the struggle will hold you in his grip. Then submit to him and allow him to bless you and to name you as the one that he loves and to, to define you for his purpose, for the reason that he made you all along, that you would become even more the person, the man or the woman or the boy or girl that God had always intended you to be. That you no longer rely upon the things that you did do over the years through the difficult times, just like Jacob running. For you, it might have been that you were running away through your work or through your exercise or through your socialising and being out all the time with your friends or maybe even by going to church meetings every week and every meeting that was on, God's now displaced all of that. And in this, he wants us to wrestle with him, to struggle with him, that we might become intimately attached to him, that he might bless us and name us as his loved one. Let's pray together. Our Father, we just want to thank you that in the midst of this very difficult trying time, that you stop us in our tracks and that you tell us that you love us. And you want us to reflect, Lord, on the elements of our character that we know are wrong and we want to repent and say that we're sorry, Lord. We want to tell you that we're wrong and that we're sorry. And Lord, we ask that you would forgive us. We ask that through this difficult time, we might intimately engage with you in a whole new way, that we might be transformed, that Lord, you might name us as the man and women that you always intended us to be. Lord, in the midst of this crisis, may you turn it in around for your glory. May you transform us as individuals. May you transform our families. May you transform our church, Lord. May you transform our community. May you transform our nation. Lord, this is a crisis and we just pray that you would intervene, that you would save lives. But Lord, more than anything, we pray that you would use this for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. I've got a sweat on now. The fire's roasting. Bye-bye.